Chapter 29. Francisco's Vision While Narcissa was consoling the afflicted patient, I was being hailed over what was called an urban communications device. It was Laura, who wanted to know where I was. In fact, I had forgotten to tell her about my decision to stay the night shift. I apologized to my benefactress, and I gave her a brief verbal report on the new situation. Even over the wire, I could tell that she seemed to rejoice at the news and shared in my justifiable happiness. At the end of our brief conversation, she graciously said, Very well done, my son. Show a passionate interest in your work, and let your heart be filled with the joy of being useful. This is the only way we can continue to evolve. But remember that this house belongs to you as much as the rest of us. These words filled me with noble incentive. Returning to pay personal attention to the patients, I found Narcissa struggling heroically to calm a young man who seemed oddly disturbed. I tried to help her. Blindly gazing into space, the poor boy was shouting in agony, Help me, for the love of God! I'm afraid! I'm afraid! And with the painful look of someone who was experiencing profound horror, he exclaimed, Sister Narcissa, it is coming, the monster. I can feel the worms again. It, it, save me from it, sister. I don't want, I don't want. Calm down, Francisco, replied the dedicated nurse. You can break free and feel serene and happy, but it depends on your own efforts. Just pretend that your mind is a sponge soaked in vinegar. You must wring out the sour substance. It'll help you. I'll help you. But you must do the hardest work yourself. The patient showed he was willing to try, and he calmed down as he listened to her caring suggestions. However, he then took on the same pallor as before and began yelling new exclamations. But sister, listen to me. It won't go away. It's back again to torment me. Look, look. Yes, Francisco, I see it, she agreed patiently, but it is essential for you to help me drive it away. Oh, what a diabolical ghost, he added, weeping like a child and inspiring my compassion. Put your trust in Jesus and forget the monster, the wretched young man's nurse piously said, and let me apply some passes. The ghost will flee from us. And she applied healthy and comforting magnetic fluids to him. Francisco thanked her, looking enormously relieved. Now, he said, after the magnetic operation was over, I feel calmer. Narcissa arranged his pillow and asked a nurse to bring him a glass of magnetized water. Her example as a nurse was constructive to me. Good, like evil, is everywhere mysteriously contagious. Noticing my earnest desire to learn, Narcissa showed that she was willing to initiate me into the sublime secrets of service. What was the patient referring to, I asked, really impressed. Is he being pursued by some kind of shadow that I can't see? The old worker of the chambers of rectification smiled kindly and said, No, actually he's being pursued by his own corpse. What do you mean? The poor man was excessively attached to his physical body and came to the spirit world after a disaster caused by his own sheer imprudence. For many days he refused to conform to his new situation and wouldn't leave his interned remains. He was so deeply ensconced in the domain of illusion that he actually tried to resurrect his stiff body, and he spent a long time in that sad effort. He was terrified at the idea of facing the unknown and was utterly unable to muster even the slightest detachment from physical sensations. Aid from higher spheres was of no avail, for he had closed his mind against every thought related to the eternal life. Finally, he experienced such atrocious suffering from the worms eating his body that the poor creature ran from his grave, aghast with horror. He then began to wander in the lower zones of the umbral. However, his earth parents had considerable spiritual credit here, and they pleaded for him to be treated in the colony. The Samaritans brought him almost by force. His condition is still so grave that he won't be able to leave the chambers of rectification very soon. The friend who had been his physical father is now engaged on a dangerous mission far from Nasalar. 
Does he come to see the patient, I asked? He has already come twice, and both times I was deeply moved by his silent grief. The young man's mental disorder is so great that he didn't even recognize his own generous and devoted father. He shouted his affliction, showing his painful dementia. His father came to visit him with Minister Padua from the Ministry of Communication. He seemed far above the human condition while in the presence of that noble friend who had been responsible for hospitalizing his unhappy son. They spent quite a bit of time commenting on the spiritual condition of the newcomers from the physical sphere, but when Minister Padua took his leave, he had urgent duties to perform, the young man's father apologized for his human gesture and knelt by the patient's bed he anxiously took his son's hand into his own, as if transmitting invigorating vital fluids to him, and then, weeping profusely, kissed his forehead. I couldn't hold back my tears, and I left the room so they could be alone. I don't know what happened next between them, but since that day I've noticed that Francisco has improved a great deal. His total dementia has been reduced to occasional crises that are occurring farther and farther apart. I'm moved by all you've just said, I exclaimed, highly impressed. But how can the image of his corpse pursue him? Francisco's vision is the nightmare that many spirits face after physical death. They are excessively attached to their body, seeing and living for nothing else. They make it a true object of worship, and when the breeze of renewal comes, they refuse to leave it behind. They reject any ideas that they are a spirit once again and fight desperately to hold on to their physical body. After a while, however, voracious worms appear and drive them away. By that time, they have become horrified by their body and they adopt a radically new attitude. But the sight of their own corpse, a powerful mental creation of their own doing, torments them to the innermost recesses of their soul. They experience disturbances and crises that last for a shorter or longer amount of time, and many continue suffering until their ghost corpse has completely disintegrated. Realizing that I was deeply troubled, Narcissa added, Thanks be to the Father, I have learned a great deal during these past few years of service. Ah... Uh, how deep is the spiritual slumber of most of our incarnate brothers and sisters. However, we should be concerned but not hurt by that fact. The chrysalis adheres to inert matter, but the butterfly will spring from it in flight. The acorn is almost imperceptible, yet a giant oak will grow from it. The withered flower returns to the ground, but its fragrance will continue to live on in the air. All embryonic life appears to be sleeping. We must never forget these lessons. Narcissa fell silent, and I didn't interrupt her again.